so this is lecture 4 fixed principles law and government from center we will take up today the study of the last part of the third paragraph relating to the fixed principles by which the position must be guided in time past outside of the doctrinal statements of homeopathy medicine has been a matter of experience and medicine today outside of homeopathy is a medicine of experience now in order that the mind may be open to receive the doctrines it is necessary that the exact and proper position of experience should be realized if the true conception of law and doctrine order and government prevail in man's mind he would not be forever hatching out theories as they would not be necessary and moreover he would be wise enough to know and see clearly what is truth and what is folly experience has a place in science but only a confirmatory place it can only confirm that which has been discovered through principle or law guiding in a proper direction experience leads to no discoveries but when man is fully indoctrinated in principle that which he observes by experience may confirm the things that are consistent with law one who has no doctrines no truth no law who does not rely upon law for everything imagines he discovers by experience out of his experience he will undertake to invent and his invention run in every conceivable direction hence we may see in this century a medical convention of a thousand physician who rely entirely upon experience at which one will arise and relate his experience and another will arise and tell his experience and the talkers of the convention continue to debate and no two talkers agree when they have finished they compare their experience and that which they settle upon they call science no matter how far they may be from the truth next year they come back and they have different ideas and have had different experience and they then bought out what they bought it in before this is the medicine of experience they confirm nothing but makes from experience a series of invention and theories this is the wrong direction the science of medicine must be built on a true foundation to be sure man must observe but there is a difference between true observation in a science under law and principle and the experience of a man who has no law and no principle old patient medicine denies principle and law calls it system the medicine of experience and hence its doctrines are kaleidoscope changing every year and never appearing twice alike let me again impress the necessity of knowing something about internal government of man in order to know how disease develops and travels if we observe any government the government of the universe civil government the government of commerce physical government we find that there is one center that rules and controls and is supreme a man has within him by endowment of divine a supreme center of government which is in the gray matter of the cerebrum and in the highest portion of the gray matter 
Everything in man and everything that takes place in man is presided over primarily, primarily by this center, from center to circumference. If man is injured from external, example, if he has his finger torn, it will soon be repaired. The order which is in the economy from center to circumference will repair every wrong that is on the surface caused by external violence. The order of repair is the same in external as in internal violence. Injuries are external violence, but disease are internal disorder performing violence. All true diseases of the economy flow from center to circumference. All miasm are true diseases. In the government of man, there is a triad, a first, second, and third, which gives direction, with the cerebrum. Cerebrum and spinal cord, or when taken more collectively or generally, 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 the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves, considered more internal internally we have the will and understanding forming a unit making the interior man the vital force or vice regent of the soul in the bracket that is the limbus or soul stuff the formative substance bracket close which is immaterial and then the body which is material thus from the innermost the will or voluntary principles through the limbus or simple substance to the outermost the actual or material substance of man which is in every cell we have this order of direction Every cell in man has its representative of the innermost, the middle and the outermost. There is no cell in man that does not have its will and understanding, its soul stuff or limbus or simple substance and its material substance. Now. Disease must flow in accordance with this order because there is no inward flow. Man is protected against things flowing in from outer toward the center. All disease flows from the innermost to the outermost and unless drug substances are prepared in the form to do this they can neither produce nor cure disease. There are miasm in the universe, acute and chronic. The chronic, which have no tendency towards recovery, are three, Sora, Syphilis, and Psychosis. We shall study these later. Outside of acute and chronic miasm, there are only the results of disease to be considered. The miasm are contagious. They flow from the innermost to the outermost. And while they exist in organs, yet they are imperceptible, for they cannot exist in man unless they exist in form subtle enough to operate upon the innermost of man's physical nature. The correspondence of the innermost cannot be discovered by man's eye, by his fingers, or by any of his senses. Neither can any disease cause be found with the microscope. Disease can only be perceived by its results, and it flows from within out 
from center to circumference, from the seat of government to the outermost. Hence, cure must be from within out. In the form of our civil government, we see a likeness to this. Let any great disturbance come upon our government at Washington and see how, like lightning, this is spelled to the circumference of the nation. How the whole country becomes shaken and disturbed as if by disease if it is an evil government. If the government be good, we observe it in the form of improvement, and everybody is benefited by it. If in the great centers of commerce, London, Paris, or New York, some great crash or crisis takes place. How the very circumference that depends upon the centers is shaken, as it were by disease. Every little political office depends upon Washington and that order must be preserved most truly. The sheriff and constable the judge and the court are little governments dependent upon the law that is formed by the state. The law of the state would be nothing if the center of our government at Washington were dethroned by an other nation. All the laws and principles in Pennsylvania depends upon the permanency and orderliness of the government in Washington. And there is a series from Washington to Harrisburg and from Harrisburg to Philadelphia. There can be no broken link. It can now be seen what is to be understood by order and directions and that there are directions, nothing can flow in from the outermost to affect the innermost. Disturb one of our courts in Philadelphia, and this does not disturb the country or the constitutional government. If the finger is burnt, this does not or any great extent disturb the constitutional government of the man but the constitutional government repairs it. It is not a disease, it does not track the whole frame. <clears throat> it is only that which shakes the whole economy, disturb the government, which is a disease. So, man may have his hand cut off without the system being disturbed, but let the little dis disease Measles, for example, blow in from the center and his whole economy is wrecked. All patient medicine talks of experience, but it is entirely dependent on the eye and fingers. Appearances are wonderfully deceptive. If you examine any acute miasm, you may know what it is looks like, but the ease of it cannot be discovered by any of the senses. We have seen that everything is governed by it from the center. Now what comes in the direction of law? What comes from principle comes from the center is flowing in accordance with order and can be confirmed by experience. To apply it more practically, what we learn from the use of the law of homeopathics, what we observe after learning that law and the doctrine that relate to it, all our subsequent experience confirms the principles. For example, 
every experience with Bryonia makes Bryonia so much brighter in mind. With experience one grows stronger. One does not change or alter with every mood, but becomes firmly established. If everything tends to disturb the mind, that means that you are in the state of poly or that you are insane. It may be a little of both. A man that relies on experience to guide him never knows. His mind is constantly changing, never settled. It has no validity. Validity is something absolutely essential to science. It is necessary for homeopaths to look upon law as valid and not upon man. As there is no man valid. In homeopathy, it is very principle itself that is valid and things that are not in accordance with principle should not be admitted. We see from all this the necessity of potentization. All causes are so refined in character, so subtle in their nature, that they can operate from center to circumference, operate upon men's interiors, and from the interior to the very exterior. The coarser things cannot permit the skin. Man's skin is an envelope protecting him against contagion from coarser materials. But against the immaterial substance he is protected only when in perfect health. In an unguarded moment he suffers, and this is the nature and quality of disease cause. It can only flow into man from the center and toward the outermost in a way to disturb his government. The disturbance of government is the disturbance of order. And this is all there is of sickness. And we have only to follow this out to find that the very house man lives in and his cells are becoming deranged. Changes are the result of disorder and end in breaking down, degeneration, etc. Pus cells and the various forms of degeneration are only the result of disorder. So long as order and harmony go on perfectly, so long the tissue are in the state of health. The metamorphosis is healthy and tissue change is normal. The physiological state is maintained. We can only comprehend the nature of disease and tissue changes and result of disease by going back to its beginning. The study of etiology in old school is a wonderful farce because it begins with nothing. It is an assumption that tissue changes are the disease. From the doctrines of homeopathy, it will be seen that morbid anatomy, no matter where it occurs, must be considered to be the result of disease. All curable diseases make themselves known to the physician by signs and symptoms. When the disease does not make itself known in signs and symptoms, and it progress is in the interior, we at once perceive that the man is in a very precarious condition, condition of the body that are incurable are such very often as 
have no external signs or symptoms. In the fourth paragraph, Hanneman says, The physician is likewise a preserver of health if he knows the things that derange the health and cause disease and how to remove them from person in health. If the physician believes that causes are external, if he believes that the material changes in the body are the things that disturb health, are a fundamental cause of sickness, he will undertake to remove these. Example, he will cut off hemorrhoids or remove the tumor. But these are not the object Hanneman means. The object he means are invisible and can only be known by signs and symptoms. Of course, it is quite right for the physician to remove those things that are external to the sick man and are troubling him. These are no disease, but they are in a measure disturbing him and making him sick aggravating his chronic miasm so that it will progress and destroy. These are outward obstacles and not the disease. But in this way man is very often rendered more susceptible to acute miasms. The things which keep up disease relate more particularly to external things. There are conditions in man's life which keep up or encourage man's disease disorder. The disorder is from the interior, but many of the disturbances that aggravate the disorder are external. The cause of disorder is internal and is of such a quality that it affects the garment from the interior, while the coarser things are such as can disturb more especially the body, such as improperly selected food, living in damp houses, etc. It is hardly worth while to dwell upon these things because any ordinary physician is sufficiently well versed in hygiene to remove from his patient the external obstacles. In the fifth paragraph Hanneman says, useful to the physician in assisting him to cure are the particulars of the most probable exciting cause of the acute disease etc <clears throat> the probable exciting cause is the inflowing of the cause as an invisible immaterial substance which having passed in upon the interior flows from the very center to the outermost of the economy creating additional disorder these miasms all require a given time to operate before they can affect the external man. And this time is called the prodromal stage. This is true of sora, syphilis and psychosis and of every acute contagious disease known to man. While the influx is upon the innermost of physical man it is not apparent but when it be begins to operate upon the nerves and through affecting him in the outermost then it becomes apparent each miasm produces upon human economy its own characteristics just as every drug produces upon human economy its own characteristics. Hanneman says that these must be recognized. 
that the homeopathic physician must be familiar enough with disease cause, with disease manifestations and drug manifestation to be able to remove them in accordance with principles fixed and certain. There should be no hypothesis nor opinion, neither should simple experience have a place. If the physician is dealing with acute case, he must take into consideration the nature of case as a malady, and so also with chronic cases. It is supposed that he is conversant with disease from having observed the symptoms of a great many cases and is therefore able to hold before the mind the image of the disease. When he, he is truly conversant with the very image of the sick, sickness that exists upon the human race, he is then prepared to study materia medica. All the imitations of miasm are found in drugs. There is no miasm of the human race that does not have its imitations in drugs. The animal kingdom has in itself the image of sickness. And the vegetable and mineral kingdom in like manner. And if man were perfectly conversant with the substance of these three kingdoms, he could treat the whole human race. By close application, the physician must fill his mind with images that correspond to the sickness of the human race. It is being conversant with symptomatology, with the symptoms image of disease that makes one a physician. The books of the present time are defective in that they ignore symptomatology and do not furnish us an image of the sickness. They are extensively treatise or pathology upon heredity with very little of the patient himself. If we go back to the earliest time when the physician did not know so much about the microscope, when he did not examine into the cause of disease so minutely, we will find in such works as Watson practice much better description of sickness. Watson stands at the bedside and relates what his patients look like. And hence it is a grand old book for a homeopathic physician. Chambers, in his lectures at St. Mary Hospital, London, also relates with accuracy the appearance of the patient. At the present time, the old school physician says, I want to know nothing about your symptoms. Take this and go to the first drugstore and have it filled. This is the state of things at the present time. A look at the tongue, a peel of the pulse, and take this handing a prescription to be filled at the nearest pharmacy. Is that observing the sick? Can such a man be the guardian of the sick? When it requires time to bring out every little detail of sickness, and a nervous girl is driven off and never permitted to tell her symptoms, 
such patients have told me. After an hour's conversation and talking of symptoms, the other doctor told me I had hysteria, that there was nothing the matter with me, that I was just nervous. That is what modern pathology leads men to think and say. Everything is denied. They cannot be discovered by the senses. Hence, this false science has crept upon us until it is typical poly. As to the end of sickness, what sickness will do is of no great matter because by symptoms we have perceived the nature of this illness and may safely trust to the remedy. If no remedy be applied to check the progress of the disease, it may localize in the heart, lungs or kidneys, but the nature of sickness exists in the state of disordered government expressed by signs and symptoms. Thank you.